everybody. Thank you for all of you uh, for joining us online here in our church gathering. And if you guys hear me in the foyer in the kitchen, well, we're about to start. And I'm going to ask uh, Karen to open us up in prayer. Thank you, Karen. As we prepare our hearts to be together to worship God. And uh, again, thank you so much for joining us online. Let us pray. Good morning, everybody. Let's all stand for the opening prayer, please. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your faithfulness in our lives. It is because of your loving kindness, care, and protection that we are here. Thank you because you're bringing us together here for this service. We call on to you to guide us to service. Accept all our sacrifices of worship, praise, and prayer. Forgive our sins so that we are acceptable for your presence. Allow your Holy Spirit to be in our midst. As we start this service, may you be glorified from the beginning to the end. Please give us your peace that we may be able to listen to you. We pray this in the name of God the Father. We love you, Jesus. name together and forever. Amen, church? Let us rise from our seats. Let's give him glory that he deserves.
Thank you. 
right where you are. Just tell him right now. I praise God for, I thank you, God. Just tell Jesus right now. Whether you want to do it in the silence of your head and your heart or just out loud, just tell God. I thank you for, I praise your name for. Tell him right now. In our church. Just right now, think of somebody within the church that you know needs God's protective covering, healing, whatever it is. Go. God, I pray for fill in the blank. Whether it's for wisdom or direction, whether it's healing upon their bodies. issues within the family. I don't know. God knows. Pray for somebody right now. As you continue to do that, let's pray for our city, Vallejo. Pray against the crime and the violence. Pray for unity amongst our Christian churches, just pray over our city right now. Prayers like, Lord, heal our land. <clears throat> and lastly, between you and God, where are you at with the Lord? At this time, Cry out to him in terms of supplication, your needs. Lord, I'm doubting, increase my faith. Lord, you know the struggle, the number one thing, that the worry on my heart and my mind. Lord, hear my prayer. You know who I'm concerned about. Lord, I'm going to fork in the road. I need your, your say on the matter. I need your direction. Lord, my body is hurting. Are you even there? Just right now, between you and God, pray. Almighty Father, creator of heaven and of earth and of all things, remind us right now that you have to, maybe for some of us, how real this all is, that we don't just get dressed up and come for an hour, but everything that we're about right now, whether we're watching online or we're here together, that this is all real. So in this realness, in this time together, Father, may you be worshipped, may you be glorified. Yes, Lord, I pray, Father, that people will come in this room right now, whether online or in this room, and they'll know that you're, you are love, that you are forgiveness, despite what we might have done this week that has, might have been offensive to you. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. And so we pray, Father, supernaturally, Lord God, that you'll continue to use us within our families. That certain miracle, that certain thing that we've been crying out to you when we pray, Father, that your will be done, your kingdom come on the situation, that we will trust in you, that we will represent you, Father, no matter what you choose to do, whatever the outcome is, that ultimately you'll be glorified. We pray for Vallejo. Father, we pray, God, that we will continue to be a light, joining all the other churches. We pray for your covering, we pray for your protection, we pray for your boldness, your strength, your energy to continue to be the people you've called us to be. So we pray, Father, not, it's not always about feeling your presence, but we pray, Father, that your presence will ever be so thick in this room, amongst our families, individually, those
those watching online, Father, that they will know that you are God, that you have a purpose, that there's joy. I pray, Father, a sense of a lack of joy. I pray, Father, that your joy and your peace, those fruits of the Spirit will just be so evident in our lives, despite as we've sung just recently, Father, despite storm and trials and at times suffering, that there'll be joy and peace, which is only found in you, our Lord Jesus Christ. So we thank you for life. We thank you for who you are. In Jesus' name, in all of God's name, amen, amen, amen. You may have a seat. Thank you, church. Thank you, worship team. few uh, reminders. Uh, bowling today, 2 o'clock, is that right? Yeah. 2 o'clock at Napa. Uh, again, I believe we have six lanes, and so uh, come see Tala and the Women's Ministry. Thank you so much for leading that. I'm looking today to beat my highest score since high school, 1992. I took bowling class as an elective. I'm trying to beat 189. That's my top score, 189. So we'll see if that will be broken this afternoon, uh, just for fun. But fun and fellowship, we have about six lanes. We'll see you guys at Napa today. And uh, if you're kind of concerned about your children, uh, let's talk about, we'll talk to uh, the women's ministry in terms of specifics on uh, uh, who's going to watch the kids and all that. So again, bully. Uh, we're going to be pushing our annual meeting, not next Sunday, but February 20th. Uh, we still need a little bit more time for uh, our nominees to pray and decide, and so it was supposed to be for the 13th, so we're pushing annual meeting uh, in terms of voting for our new leadership and delegates uh, to February 20th, and uh, we'll be voting online, which thank you for uh, you know, creating the, the site and the link, so we'll, we'll remind you about that in terms of annual meeting. Uh, Christian Help Center. Uh, in terms of feeding the hungry, we're going to continue to uh, uh, cook dinner and be with the people there, the precious people, the homeless, the hungry. Thank you to Willie. Uh, Willie cooked dinner for a youth group this past Wednesday. That meant a lot to me. Thank you, Willie. And he's also going to be the iron chef in charge of cooking uh, for the homeless and the hungry at the Christian Help Center. So that's Monday, February 21st. And uh, just the ministry of presence, just the ministry of being there. Yes, we need you to come about 4, 35 o'clock to help set up, uh, but just to be with the people, to hear their stories. I'm going to bring my guitar like always. I'll play, pray, I'll, I'll play some Christian music, yes, but I also play some 70s, 80s, 90s classic stuff that they, they might like. And, but again, just to be there, pray with them, eat with them, and uh, just to get to know their, their lives and their stories. So we invite you Monday dinner. There'll be enough food for you also, right, Willie? And so yeah. we all eat together. Uh, I'll do a quick devotion in terms of talking about Jesus. But we need you all there if you can make it. I know some of you guys work and because and, they're scheduling. But if you can be there Monday, February 21st, to be with the homeless and the hungry, please be there. Um, praise God. Also, uh, March 7th, I want to remind you, Amador First Church of the Nazarene, Pastor David Hatfield, they are, he's doing uh, an amazing job continually share, sharing the gospel, uh, and so they've invited us all. Also, our worship team is going to be leading worship. That's also a Monday night. Uh, they, they're calling it the prayer conference. Pastor David is speaking. I'm speaking that, that Monday also, so we invite all of you to come. It's going to be a great time together of revival and fellowship uh, and just being together as God's people. Amen? Amen. At this time, we are going to uh, take the offering, and uh, we're excited of Malou to, to sing. Uh, but I'm going to invite Jane uh, Kaplan to come and pray for our offering. And right after the prayer, we'll be blessed in a uh, special number by Malou. Uh, just so, Jane, thank you, come. Thank you, ushers, for being ready. Also, appreciate all of you. Let us pray. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. I want to read this passage from uh, 2 Corinthians verse 9, chapter 9, verse 7. Each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Shall we bow our heads for our um, offering prayer? Dear gracious Heavenly Father, we praise you and thank you, Lord, for your goodness and faithfulness. Thank you, Lord, for all the blessings that you've given us. 
Thank you for supplying our needs and giving us more than what we need. We ask you, Lord, to accept these offerings and use them for your glory. We pray that you would multiply these offerings and accomplish with them more than we could ask or imagine. May these gifts bring shelter to the homeless, comfort to the sick, rest to the weary, and hope to the hopeless. Bless the gifts and the giver. We give you all the glory. In your mighty name we pray. Amen.
love that song. Thank you, Jesus. I wanted to show you a quick video of outreach uh, in terms of food boxes and uh, picking up trash within the community. Uh, and then we're going to get into God's word. Thank you. Pickups. It's like uh, when I see Zion at our uh, outreaches, it's like he's like uh, at Disneyland, right? <laughs> the same energy and excitement that he, he has a, at a theme park. He's there picking up trash and just enjoying it. And uh, so, thank you for all of you uh, who are able to come and serve. Uh, again, meeting new amazing people. A lady named Rajanik, the o new owner of Grocery Outlet. Uh, got to meet her and uh, fellowship with her and she had her family out there and she said uh, hey let me know if you guys need anything you know I own grocery outlet now and uh, in terms of giving back to the community and she just loves what we are doing and how we participate and she said that hey you know we're here for you if you need anything come call me things like that amen, amen. and uh, if you go there today there's no trash because of you guys and so praise God again it's just about serving God having fun together, uh, picking up trash, and meeting new precious people. Yes? Yeah. Amen, amen. The Word of God is going to be up there with the first picture. Uh, Sky, is there kids? Thank you, um, Sky, for uh, leading uh, the children's ministry. <laughs> hey, 
terms of the minister's wife, if someone there's there's no role that uh, if that's not filled, it's always left on the minister's wife at times. But thank you, Sky, for all that you do. Amen. Mm -hmm. Have you ever had to call out somebody? I'm not talking about a fist fight or anything, which I know some of you have. But uh, in terms of calling out someone because you're just so concerned about the, the choices that he or she has been making. If you had to, out of love, call out somebody. I was just fresh out of uh, serving at a Christian camp in Lake Arrowhead, California. And I was about to start my new career as a college student at Point Loma Nazarene University. So I'm already on a spiritual high coming from Christian camp for three months. And I'm about to go to college at a Christian college, and I was there, and I met my roommate, and I met my roommate for the first time there, the first day of school, and I'm so excited, and there's my roommate, and he's smoking the biggest bomb I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Christian University, and here's my roommate that I'm going to be living with for the whole year, smoking weed, <laughs> right? Now, on the other hand, he's, he grew up, grew up in a Christian home, success story, he came back to the Lord. Amen? Amen. But let's go back to this. <laughs> there he is, right? There are some times, there are some times when I'd wake up at like 4 a.m. in the morning, right? And there he is, he's parting white substances in different bags. Another time, he would come to me and say, ah, Tim. I need to borrow your knife. I had this big Rambo knife. I don't know why I brought the call. But I had this big Rambo knife, and I need to borrow your knife. I gotta settle some accounts downtown. I'm like, no, you can't borrow my knife. And then at one point, I was so concerned. His older brother's a pastor. His dad, a pastor, coming from a long line of Christian tradition and serving the Lord, that I finally had to tell the Point Loma authorities, and I, I had to call his dad. And I had to tell him, look, if you don't do this, I'm going to report you, not because I'm a tattletale, because I'm so concerned about the choices you're making. And it was such a difficult decision. I was worried for my own life at times. But I had to do it because I was so concerned of what was happening with his life and the choices he was making and how he was affecting people all around him. Christian University, but I knew all the drug dealers at Fort Loma Nazarene University. <laughs> we stumble on this passage in terms of the book of Amos. And here is a messenger, a prophet, called by God. Now he's this, this average old shepherd. This message was given to Amos, a shepherd. He's not a professional prophet or a professional speaker, or a professional pastor. He's just a shepherd from the southern part of the nation. And he gets this vision from God. He gets this purpose that I need you, I'm going to use you to call out the northern kingdom. Now, if we are un unsure, if we don't remember what's happening here in Jewish history, there was a civil war just like our own United States Civil War. Okay? There was a, uh, a division, north and south. The, the prophet Amos was from the south. And God was very angry of what was happening in the northern kingdom. And he called Amos, that I need you to go out there and let them know that I am here. That I do not, I love you, but I do not approve what you are doing and the choices you are making. At times, God gets angry. Would you agree? Yes. He's the God of love, yes. But we see in the Word of God at times that He gets very upset. And two reasons why He gets upset. When God's people, when His own creation, start worshiping other things, idol worship. And number two, the, one of the reasons why He gets so upset is obviously sin but particularly when his people mistreat each other and take advantage of those who are in need and neglect the poor. He gets angry. And he calls Amos right here in this chapter to go from the south, 
go to the north and send them this message. So this kind of history right there, uh, 760 BC, 760 years before Jesus, right? You will find the, this, this situation, uh, this history take place, right? Amos, in terms of the prophets. And here's what happens. Number one, can you hit it one more time? <coughs> Is it working? Mm -hmm. Everyone say justice. justice. Yeah. So look, he says this, hear this. This is the message he needs, he wants them to tell them in the north. Hear this, you who trample the needy and do away with the poor of the land. And then in, in uh, Amos 2, this is what the Lord says. The people of Israel have sinned again and again, and I will not let them go unpunished. They sell honorable people for silver and poor people for a pair of sandals. They trample helpless people in the dust and shove their breasts out of the way. And there's other verses, Amos 4, Amos 5, in terms of this very fact that they are neglecting the poor, but not only neglecting the poor, there's a society up there that is pushing them and using them to gain advantage, and to gain more wealth, and to gain more status. You see that? And God is angry at that, at the people. Because during this time, a lot of the people are, are very stable in terms of their government and financial uh, uh, needs and so a lot of them though are taken and forgetting about the poor they're mistreating their own people and the Jewish people they're supposed to be God's chosen people chosen to do what to reflect and represent that there is a God and they're not representing God they're mistreating each other they're taking advantage of each other one more time I think there's another verse, another verse. Next slide. Yeah. Back, back one. <clears throat> Again, whoever, listen to this. Whoever shuts their ears to the cry of the poor will also cry out and not be answered. Mm -hmm. Wow. You know, I was, you know, we elect delegates. One of the things we're going to do is elect delegates to attend district assembly, joining all the 100 plus NorCal NAS churches. And I remember when I was in Hawaii, in Hawaii we only have about 22 uh, Nazarene churches in terms of the district, the Hawaii Pacific District. And uh, so excited. Every time we, we come together for district assembly, we, we, we talk about certain things. We have, it's a huge huge time together in terms of worship and, and, and education and hearing speakers, uh, but it's also a time where pastors give their reports. And I remember, I'm a very, you know, you guys know I'm a very video guy. I showed my um, video pastor report. And throughout the five minute presentation, there's our church in Kahului, Maui, serving the poor, feeding the hungry, picking up trash, joining other churches. It's just filled with being in the community, loving those in need. And there was a 10 second part of the, because we, we wanted to report everything of what took place and give God the glory. There was a short, 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 short segment of, oh, by the way, we got new carpet. We got new carpet for the church sanctuary. And so can you imagine a whole building, maybe five times the size of this building, when they saw the report, when they saw that I mentioned that we got new carpet, the whole place erupted. Oh, praise God! New carpet! Now, now don't get me wrong. Someone donated the carpet, and I, we gave God glory for that. That's exciting. We got new carpet. But that's what got the people excited. Do you hear my heart? Do you hear the breaking of my heart? That the place erupted because of new carpet. And there was nothing exciting at all in terms of the other things that we were doing. That broke me. Now that doesn't represent the Hawaii Pacific District. I don't know what took place there, but it just broke me that that's what we celebrated. As you guys are hopefully seeing, again, Zion's a perfect example. But I hope that as we're 
driving to Navajo Brewers. We're so excited to go bowling together, and that excites us. I hope the same excitement goes in terms of getting food boxes. The same energy and excitement that we, that we have for our New Year's Eve parties is there when we come and pick up trash. When we serve the poor. That same excitement that we do in terms of our fun events. Our, 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 uh, our was it October? Our uh, uh, yearly uh, anniversary? It's October, right? September. September, September. The same excitement in terms of September for our, you know, is that we have the same excitement when we go feed the hungry with Willie on the 21st. <clears throat> That we must be people that do not neglect the poor. Amen? Amen. I got a reimbursement check from Karen. Thank you, Karen. About $70. <laughs> because a family, and this is a consistent, it's not the same family, it's different families throughout our community, not in terms of our church membership. I'll get phone calls. Pastor, I'm in such desperate need. I am starving. I have no groceries. And I know, you know, we need to watch our money, but I'm just so broken in terms of the community that, yeah, let me go, I'll meet you at so-and-so. Here's $70 worth of groceries. And I got to pray with these families time and time again. Why? Because you guys consistently tithe that we're able to do this. Not only food boxes, not only picking up trash, not only cooking, um, but helping the needs within our community. That we cannot neglect the poor. Amen? Man, God gets a little harsh in this next one. Number one, justice. Next, number two. Man, when I heard this, man. Look at this. I hate. God, he used that language? The God of love? I hate. I despise your religious feasts. We can just put potlucks there, okay? I cannot stand your assemblies, even though you bring me burnt offerings and grain offerings, give me your tithe and whatnot. I will not accept them. Though you bring choice fellowship offerings, I will have no regard for them. Away with the noise of your songs. What? I don't want to hear you sing Cornerstone. I'm not talking about you, not attacking us. But look. Away with the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the music. I'm not going to listen to Angelo rip right now. Right? But let justice roll on like a river. Righteousness like a never-failing stream. Again, in terms of he's directing this to the northern kingdom. When you have your worship services and your potlucks and your religious feasts and your music, I'm not even going to hear you because... You are mistreating each other, you're neglecting the poor, and you're taking advantage of people. Your worship services are deaf to me. You guys see that? <coughs> and obviously, hopefully what's happening already, we never, we don't want to be in that place. That there should be a healthy balance in terms of the church, our church, that we are to be people of gathering and worship services, but also the balance of we're out there <coughs> serving and loving, using our God-given gifts. Amen? Amen? I remember talking to someone, and he said, man, I, I just think that the, the most powerful place you can be is, you know, convulsing in a worship service and being filled with the Holy Spirit and, uh, what do you call that, you know, she, she used words like, man, I was just drunk with the Spirit, and I was just slain by the Spirit. And she was just telling me, man, that's just the highest form of Christianity. <clears throat> and I wanted to tell her, and I did, look, the highest form of Christianity is going to a homeless person and making them a meal. <clears throat> I'm not neglecting the power of the Holy Spirit, but I know the power of the Holy Spirit calls us to serve the poor to minister, and to love. Even when it's scary. Right? I've told you before, I've never had to be, I've ne I was never scared for my life uh, helping the poor and the downtrodden and the marginalized in, in, in Maui. Never was, right? 
I was kind of like a celebrity when I would go to these lower income housing and people would just love me and our church because we were doing so much here. I'm like, God, I'm at Marina Vista Apartments again. I don't want to get out of my car, God. Because I heard what happened last night there. Even when it's so scary, God, I just, I'm, and it's actually the most beautiful place I can be because I'm so, I need to be so reliant on my safety just to get out of my car so I can feed these people with the boxes that you guys get. Amen? And in those times of trust and scariness and being continued to be faithful, the presence of God is ever so thick. Now, switching gears in terms of social gatherings and whatnot, but it's, it's in the same premise, it's in the same point. Uh, you know, if you feel like the greatest sinner and you feel so unworthy to come to church service because of what you've done or what you haven't been doing, come. That this is the place to be in terms of healing. Amen? When you feel like you're the most rebellious person, this is the best place to be. That there will be no judgment in, in your face, but say, hey, welcome back. You are loved. God knows the stuff you've done. Yes, God wants you to move away from it, but God loves you. And loves you way too much for you to stay in that predicament, and to stay in that place. Yes? That in our social gatherings, that we don't fake it, right? That we come in here and we're singing these songs. I had, uh, we were at a worship service. I was with a friend. He was the drummer of my work. We were at a, a big conference and I said, hey, Greg, are you okay? He's like, man, I just, I just don't feel those words right now. I just need to sit down and just meditate, right? And just tell God, you know, don't fake the worship service. May everything that we do in here be real and authentic, right? When we sing words like, God, through the storm, I trust you alone. If you're there like, God, I'm not, I, you know I don't trust you. <laughs> then maybe it's just to sit there and say, God, hear my heart. I am in a place of just complete doubt and rebellion. <laughs> God, hear my prayer. Help me to be in that place where, you're, where you want me to be. Amen? I said amen? amen? So back to the poor and all of that. Next, last thing. I'll hit it back one more time. Right there. This is the usual cycle of God and creation. God creates something beautiful, number one. And then when you read the Bible... The next stage is their sin and rebellion. And the next stage, if you read the Word of God, especially in the Old Testament, there's judgment. God creates something beautiful. Number two, sin and rebellion. Forget you, God. There's something better in my life. And number three, God's judgment. And number four, God heals and forgives and restores again. You'll see that time and time again. So right here... This is a scary verse. Therefore, this is what I will do to you, Israel. And because I will do this to you. Now, I love meeting God. But this is a scary one. <laughs> because you do this, prepare to meet your God. Now, let's talk about some good things. Again, restoration. And then later on, right, after the judgment, in that day I will restore David's fallen tent, I will repair its broken places, restore its ruins, and build it as it used to be. Now in terms of history, um, I'm going to read this to you. This is from a textbook. Uh, Amos was profoundly correct in saying this. Though no human could have predicted it, God knew that Assyria was not entering its final decline, but was only catching its breath, the nation of Assyria. Get it one more time for me. You can see the map. All right. The nation of Assyria. Before its explosion into its final uh, century of greatness in 745 BC, uh, Tiglath Pileser III, king of Assyria, 
ascended to the throne of Assyria, and hardly more than 20 years later, in 722, the northern kingdom of Israel would cease to exist. So what happened was, God said, if you do not turn from worshiping idols and mistreating the poor, you will see my wrath. Prepare to meet your God. Now, in terms of, if this is the nation of, of, of Israel, the chosen people, God has always protected his hand on, over it. Because there's always other nations, powerful nations, but God's been protecting it and protecting it, and said, look, if you do not turn, I'm going to withdraw my protective hand, and you're going to see what's going to happen. And so as soon as God withdrew, because they were rebellious, they did not turn, they did not listen to Amos, he allowed Assyria, the northern kingdom, to come in. And they were brutal. And not only that, uh, you guys have heard of Babylon, the Babylonian Empire? So Assyria came in and just, and just kind of just destroyed. Babylonians not only came in and that was the next, the next nation that rose up, they destroyed the Assyrians, but that, that they weren't just brutal, but they took the Jewish people from their homeland and they said, by the way, you're coming to our land and 90% of you are going to be our slaves. Everyone say restoration. restoration. Everyone say Persia. 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 You heard about the Persians, right? They get a bad rap from, uh, what's that Greek? Spartans in that movie? 300. <laughs> but God used them as restoration. Then the Persian army, led by King Cyrus, came in and said, Babylonians, you guys are done. And I'm just kind of oversimplifying. And they were very cool to the, to the Jewish people. They, they rescued them, they freed them from the Babylonians, and they allowed them to be Jewish. They allowed them to worship. Again, I'm over, oversimplifying. You guys know the history. God used them in terms of restoration. Amen? Amen. The restoration now, because of the New Testament, comes in the form of Say his name together, starts with a J. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That when he create, God creates us, we rebel. There's no more condemnation and damnation because of Jesus. No more judgment because of Jesus. Amen? That we are covered by the blood. That we're forgiven of our sins. So that we can be more like Him. So that we can have true joy and purpose now. So that, because that split second we die, we will be in eternity with Him forever and ever. Thank you for Jesus, yes? yes. Amen. To kind of recap here, what can we learn from this? Number one. One more time. <clears throat> and one more time. What can we learn from Amos? Number one, when God is calling us to speak up, to speak the truth in love, let's do it and be faithful, right? When God is calling us to do something, to do something that might be scary, to stand up for truth, to be in that person's life, not to be a busybody and nosy, but if God is calling us to that certain person, Let us rely on his strength to be faithful to God by being a voice in that matter. In love, right? What's that Proverbs verse that says, wounds from a friend can be trusted. Wounds from a friend can be trusted. Sometimes when we have to speak some harsh things to someone that you know is choosing the wrong paths and wrong decisions, but you do that because out of love, because out of concern because you're concerned about the decisions that they're making. God, you're asking me to do what? Right? And so we're learning here from Amos that God, give me the boldness to speak and to stand up for truth in the most loving Jesus way possible. Amen? Amen. Number two, God, what can we learn from God? That he's always the hero. He's the hero to the oppressed to the needy, to the broken. 
What can we learn from God? A lot of us are waiting for a huge miracle. As we're waiting for our own miracle in our lives, may we continue to be a miracle and a rescue to somebody else. Let me say that again. As we're waiting, for some of us are waiting for our own miracle, may we call to God and say, God, how can you, as I'm waiting, how can I be used, God, to be a miracle and a rescue to someone else's life? Use me, God. Because God is the hero. God is the hero to the oppressed, to the broken, to the needy. Amen? Amen. Lastly, what can we learn from Israel as a whole? Obviously, let us strive not to wander from God. Be a blessing with what we have. Love Jesus who's serving the poor. Donna and I strive to put out as early as we can all the different outreach things that, that we are, are called to do. And I understand for a lot of you, we've got work, we can't get to everything. But as soon as you see the calendar, write it down. Mark it on your calendar. We can make this. And we can be a help. And maybe if you, if you, if you like, just like Willie said, hey, Willie, Willie will come up to me and say, look, I can't do this, but I can cook. Maybe come up to me and say, hey, look, these are some of my gifts. God, Pastor, how can you use me? Amen? Amen. <clears throat> One more time. <clears throat> pastor Fred said this, said this as we were just having coffee with other pastors. He said, look, the tenets of Christianity talks like that anyway. He's a smart guy. Right? The tenets of Christianity and its sacraments don't just aim to keep you in line, but they aim to change the world. Right? Meaning the rules that, I, that God has, has, has given you and the things that we're supposed to abide by, it's not just to keep you in check and to hold you back and to keep you in line, but all the things that God has called us to do and not to do is for the purpose, because you and I are the light of the world. And it's to transform the world, to show the world that they have been redeemed. That when people look to us, that they should see Jesus. Amen? Meaning the church is not here just to fix you. But the church, when we come together, is to be a blessing to a lost and broken world. Amen? Amen. Last slide. You know, at times, I, when I'm finished with my message, there's some times where I just sit back in my chair because I pray to God that it's not just a lecture. My heart is like, man, I just want to, so how can I communicate this to all of us, and even to myself, that this is not just a 30-minute, 25-minute message of stuff you need to write down and to know. I was at a Christian camp on the island of Maui, and I found this black Bible, and uh, I mean, if you can see it there, the Bible, it felt like someone put a screwdriver and stabbed it three times, or, or someone shot it, I don't know, right, but there's some three holes right there on this Bible that I just found at a Christian camp, and I opened it, and it said, presented to so-and-so by mom and dad, uh, August 20th, 1987. And when I found the Bible, I don't know what, what, what it was or what, but the Holy Spirit was speaking to me. Whether the kid lost their Bible, or the kid didn't care, or someone stole the Bible, the Bible was not in that person's hands anymore. I had it. I turned it into the camp, and no one claimed it. And it just kind of, I, just, I felt like God was just speaking to me that, I don't know, maybe the Word of God at that time I don't know how old this kid was in 1987. Maybe he didn't care. I don't even know if this person was walking with the Lord. It's been stabbed. And it just kind of spoke to me of, of the lack of sacredness. And the lack of holiness. And the lack of awe factor in terms of this Bible given to him by his parents. Because I have this Bible here, um, given to me by my dad. Well, my parents went through a difficult divorce uh, back in 1986, 1987, kind of the same time. 
I was in the fifth grade, sixth grade during that time in Sydney, Australia. And my mom, uh, mom, if you're watching, you give me permission to sell, tell the testimony. I'm talking to the camera. Uh, you know, she's giving me permission to tell the story that she left our, 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 my dad for pretty much the family's best friend. And it was such a difficult time in my life. And I remember my father all of a sudden having this Bible. And I remember as a sixth, seventh, fifth grader that um, at times when he would bring me to the office, he would keep, he'd, uh, you know, he was about an hour train ride to his office in Sydney, Australia. He would bring me at lunchtime to this Bible study. I had no idea what it was. I thought it was just these weird people opening up a book and talking about God. And I remember he would always have this Bible. And a couple of years ago, he recently gave it to me. And I wrote in the Bible, uh, in the front here, this is the Bible that God used to save my dad's life. And mine. Because I didn't have a Bible when I started going to church in 1991, 1992, and I used this Bible. Man, when I went to theology class, my first day of Old Testament at Point Loma Nazarene University, I didn't even know who Abraham was. I had no idea, right? And then last portion I put where I wrote down here, Sky, Cameron, and Caden, if I ever was to die before you, know that this Bible is very sacred to me. I wrote this in 2013, and I love it. Keep it in this bag. Church family, I just hope that everything that we're about is so sacred. Yes? And even right now, I hope you're you're not saying, uh, Pastor, uh, you're going a little long. I'm hungry. <laughs> Fried chicken's waiting. <laughs> that we're using this time like it's like we're going to overtime. The Golden State Warriors, you know, you're high fiving each other. We're this is I, I have to be here because we're talking about God. I'm I'm going to spend eternity with each other. These are the people I'm going to be living with for all of my life. That everything that we're about when the worship team gets here early. When you mow the lawn, when you pick up those boxes, when you do the scheduling, when you plan a woman's event, when you play the bass, when you write those checks, when you cook that meal, when you show up to trash pickup, when you give your tithe and you're about to write that check and you're worried about the, the other bill you have to pay. I'm human, I know too, right? Ah, right? <laughs> it's not in vain. There's a sacredness about all of this. This is all real. And we're reminded in this chapter that we're to stand up for the poor. That we are to strive to be bold, to speak the truth in love. Amen. To continue to communicate that God is the hero. And number three, Never turn away from God. Let us pray. The worship team can come. <sighs> Holy God. In terms of that word sacredness, I pray, Father, that we are reminded that everything that we are about is your people. There's fun and there's joy and all of that, Father, but may we just realize how real and how sacred this all is. That we come before you, Father, knowing that so many of us have been out there in the community. You've called us to be there. We've given our time, our treasure, our talents, all that you've given us, Lord God, back to you to serve people, to reach the lost to help each other, to encourage one another. And we just pray, Father, as we are before you as your people.
and you'll continue to speak to us. Father, show us when we are to speak the truth in love or whether we're just supposed to just sit and listen. Remind us, Father, how we are to continue to proclaim to everyone that you are the hero, that you are God, that you are real. And Father, for some of us who might have been lately in a rebellious state, you know the things that we've been doing that's been offensive to you. We pray, God, that those certain people will just receive your love and your forgiveness right now. That you love them no matter what, but you're a holy God also, Father. That you're calling us to be more like Jesus. So we love you. We're thankful for you. You are our God. You are Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Let's praise him one more time. Let's sing this last song together. Let's rise from our seat.
Thank you. We pray, Father, that you will, and we know you're already there, but you'll just cover uh, Renee uh, and the whole family as they make preparations, Father, somehow during this time. I don't know how, but may people, people be drawn to Jesus. Uh, use us as a church to be your love and your, uh, your, your light during this time of brokenness and mourning. We thank you for this day. We give you the honor and the praise. In Jesus' name. Everybody said. Amen. 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 We'll see you guys at Napa.